The following is brought to you by communication students at the University of Delaware. edition of Delaware Avenue. I'm Suzanne Marcus. And I'm Mort Schumann. Delaware Avenue is produced by students in the Communications Department at the University of Delaware as part of a winter term television project. Tonight we'll take a closer look at the controversy surrounding the implementation of a new plus minus system here at Delaware. We'll also profile the new Dean of the College of Arts and Science, Mary Richards. But first, we will examine the issue of sexual harassment as Elena Finizio speaks with a student who claims to have fallen victim to this form of abuse. Sexual harassment is a major issue in our society. It is occurring in our government, our workplaces, and even here at the University of Delaware. It can occur between faculty and students, teachers and teachers, and even between students themselves. I recently talked to a female university student who claims to have been sexually harassed. I had a professor that kind of just started out with verbal, like sexual remarks. Any, any, anything, I guess, that came to the top of his head, he basically would say. Each time we met, he would make an advance some way, always coming over to me and talking to me and talking about my body and stuff like that. I kind of felt uncomfortable, but I was just like, you know, I was a freshman and I was just like, let it go. One, one time I got a lab back with his phone number on it and I was just like, you know, a little, I was asked when I started thinking, I was totally taken by that one. I was like, this has got no correlation with the class. And he had uh, met me, I was walking on a path one day and he met me and came up to me and asked me, actually I was cornered me and he asked me how come I didn't call him. And I, um, I could laugh. I was like, "Are you serious? You know, this, you are, you're a professional, and I'm a student, and I'm not, like, you know, and there's, 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 there's no relationship. Like, there's nothing." I had a skirt, a skirt on, and he came behind me and he put his hand up my skirt and like, he, you know, squeezed my butt, <laughs> and uh, that was when I was just, I picked everything up and just got all scared and threw everything away, and I was just left the place just like really upset. Will this affect you in the future? Definitely. I mean, I never, first of all, I never really thought that I would even get this in a classroom. You know what I mean? And then when I did, I was like worrying about the things I thought I'd never have to worry about, like a grade being in jeopardy. And then I kind of, I could, you know, like it could happen with your boss. And then what do you do with it? You have your job and your family and you have things that you can't just give up. And it's sort of your word versus his. Do you have any advice for students who have been sexually harassed? To definitely speak up. Um, uh, if not for your benefit, just because there will be, I'm sure there's plenty of other girls that are harassed by um, that person. WTV recently spoke to Leanne Sorensen from the Women's Affairs Office at the University of Delaware on how the university deals with sexual harassment. So a student was harassed by a professor. We might go to the department chair and have the department chair talk to the professor. And if the department chair could determine that, yes, the student had been harassed, they might remove that uh, professor. We try to help the student handle it the way they want to handle it, but in, in a way that's the least amount of stress and, and, and um, trauma for them, I guess. Do you have any advice for someone who has been sexually harassed? Well, I would definitely recommend that they report it. Or not report it, but at least come, to, come and talk to someone in our office or the dean of students' office. Sexual harassment does occur in our society. It is not something to take lightly or ignore. If you have any questions or concerns on sexual harassment, talk to the Office of Women Affairs located at 303 Julian Hall. Find out your options and find out the law. Do not let yourself be taken advantage of. It is up to you to protect yourself. This is Elena Fenizio from WTV. After more than five years of debate, the University of Delaware finally decided to implement a plus-minus grading system last semester, rejecting the Student Congress's original plus-only proposal. Most senators probably thought that you can't have your cake and eat it too, guys. You, you know, you plus without a minus. There's a few faculty who would probably like to do that. Fine. 
but most faculty would really find that appalling. You want, you want to have plus, that would definitely lead to more great inflation, there's no doubt. That's all it would do, in fact, is lead to great inflation. And uh, I, I'm still mystified. I'd love to interview those people six or seven years ago. What were they thinking? Did they really think the faculty would go for that? Since the PLUS only system was denied, DUSK, the Delaware Undergraduate Student Congress, has been fighting to maintain the solid five-point grading system at the university, unwilling to take the minuses with the pluses. Since it became a plus-minus system, I think most students have opposed it, and the, the primary reason is that they felt that it would uh, degrade their GPAs. It would devalue it and bring it down. The current policy says that the plus-minus grading system stands. However, because there has been so much controversy on the issue, it is up to the faculty to decide how they want to implement it. What actually happened is the provost office back in September said, look, you, there is a policy of plus-minus. Don't tell me there isn't one. On the other hand, how you implement the grades is up to you. People teaching undergraduates were, were and still are much more divided. But the truth is there wasn't a large number of people against it. There weren't a huge number of people for it. There are people saying, I want to use it when I want to use it, when I think it's justified. That's where the faculty were, right. and still are. Dean of Students Tim Brooks recognizes the down points of the new grading system. But I think with minuses, we're going to see more deficit points. We'll see more people on probation. We may ultimately see fewer people graduate. However, all in all, he favors the new policy. I like the idea of plus minus because it gives me some gradations that I never had before. I've had an awful lot of students, I teach graduate courses here, who were, were good but not quite A, and so I give them a B. And I would much prefer to give them an A minus or a B plus. After one semester of plus minus, student views generally oppose the new grading system. I think it's awful. I, I don't like it at all. I don't think it's fair. There's no A plus, so then you're, you know, you can get an A minus and not an A plus, so I don't think it's a fair system at all. I think it's brought down a lot of people. I wasn't affected by it last semester at all. I just got, you know, normal grades. So I don't, I don't really know anything about it, enough about it. I hate it. it sucks. Why? <laughs> because it screws up everyone's transcript. It's just dumb. Many argue that this was a student issue that students did not have a say over. What we're seeing here is, is a symptom of, on a lot of different issues of uh, faculty senators being out of touch with the lives outside the classroom of students. Taggart's comment. Oh, when students keep reminding me how could we do this to the students, we being the nasty faculty, I remind you, guess who started this, guys? We didn't bring it up. Reporting for WTV, this is Shanna Teitelbaum. The University of Delaware, the pioneer in studying abroad, sent its first group of eight students, along with the program's founder, Raymond Kirkbride, to France in 1923. Now, almost 70 years later, France is only one of the many countries where study abroad opportunities are being offered. Germany, Austria, England, Costa Rica, Switzerland, China, Russia, and France are just some of the many countries where students can participate in the program. The many courses offered in these countries give students a chance to earn University of Delaware credit while living in a foreign country. The courses that we offer with a semester abroad program are particular for that, that region of the world. They're, of course, our language courses. Uh, I taught some biology courses and did a conservation of natural resources, a very pertinent topic in, uh, in that part of the world, in Central America and tropical rainforest. In addition, they had courses in the area of communication, political science, uh, culture. Uh, but the courses were really only a very small part of it. And it is the learning outside of the classroom that makes studying abroad such a unique experience. We find that we have to cope, that the world is different, that people have different tastes and different views. Uh, students learn this no less than the faculty. The whole experience was really incredible. Every moment, it's sort of like, as soon as you got off the plane, your senses were open to like the smells and the people and the sound. It was always different and it was, and you didn't take anything for granted because everything was really new and really exciting. In the various programs in which I've been involved, uh, students almost invariably have come back uh, with a greater appreciation for what they have here. They have a greater understanding of both the benefits and the limitations of American society. And they become more international in their, in their views, in their character. It was, it was the best time of my whole life. It really was. I learned more than I ever could here at the university. 
As for the cost of the study abroad programs, the University of Delaware remains competitive in the cost category, keeping program fees minimal. Cost to the student is regular University of Delaware tuition. There is no increase in tuition for pro participation in study abroad programs. The program fee which is charged is a comprehensive fee that covers housing, uh, in some cases meals, and always airfare, transportation to and from the United States. If you are interested in any of the study abroad programs offered by the University of Delaware, you can find out more by contacting this office, Overseas Studies in International Programs and Special Sessions. We are in 325 Hully and Hall. Or by calling 831-2852. It may be the best experience you'll ever have. The large institution we know today as the University of Delaware began as Newark College in 1833. The entire college consisted of one building, what we know today as Old College. This is the school as it looked in 1853 after the name had been changed to Delaware College. The original students, who consisted of only men, had their dormitories and dining facilities, as well as classrooms and laboratories, in this one building. Although the university has gone through innumerable changes, Old College remains today as a symbol of this university's rich history. Last year, Greek life has been at the forefront of university attention. But what does the future hold for the Greek system at Delaware? Delaware Avenue's Stephanie Mosseri takes a closer look. The Greek system at the University of Delaware has gone through some rough times in the past one and a half to two years. Abuses, alleged and confirmed, have tarnished the Greek's image. Assistant Dean and Panhellenic Advisor Jane Moore had this to say of the Greek's troubles. Well, I would say that the major problem has to do with the impression of Greeks um, through the social life and through the parties um, and having to deal in some cases with the judicial system. I think it's a combination, quite frankly, of the university probably not being as helpful as it should be and then the Greeks compounding it by some behavior that's inappropriate. Interfraternity Council President Dean Rowley recognizes the faults of the Greeks, but had this to say concerning media coverage. The media tends to linger on one bad thing that's happened in the Greek community, which is true and, and justified, but it tends to linger on that and hides the good things that Greeks do. On the subject of house monitors, a plan instituted last year, both Dean Brooks and Dean Rowley were not optimistic. I am absolutely convinced that house monitors haven't worked so far. A couple of them have been fired, and uh, one of the houses that is in a great deal of difficulty right now had a house monitor. Uh, no, I think the only way the house monitor concept is going to work is if house monitors work for the dean of students office and report to me. At this point, they have three houses that have housing monitors. Um, they're not monitoring housing monitors at all. Um, housing monitors have been fired, rehired. Uh, the school has nothing to do with it. It's totally the national hiring the housing monitors, and I don't think that's going to solve what the school wants to do. Alternate viewpoints were also presented by Kelly Sturdivant and Dean Brooks. Attorney houses are watched closer than people believe. They have housing corporations which are in charge of them, and I think it's a good idea actually to have people in the houses, but I don't think it should be mandated by the administration. We will house them in the residence halls if they wish. Uh, and I understand one fraternity will be housed in the residence halls next year. Uh, that option will remain open. What does the future hold for the Greek system here at Delaware? I believe that the Greek system is growing stronger. We're in the process right now of trying to develop a Greek council where the fraternities and sororities work together on a single council as opposed to the Panhellenic council made up of sororities and the interfraternity council made up of fraternities a council where both groups work together to better the image of fraternities and sororities on campus. This is Stephanie Masseri for WTV. As of July 1st, the University of Delaware welcomed the new Dean of Arts and Science, Mary Richards. She is the second woman to hold this office. As Dean of Arts and Science, she is the head of 23 departments at the University of Delaware. Her first priority was to deal with the budget. Well, the biggest problem was the immediate necessity to make a significant budget cut in the college. 
And in order to do that in a rational way, we formed a college budget council made up of three faculty members, three department chairs, and the dean's staff to review the college budget and make recommendations for a proposed cut. She founded the idea for a change in the core curriculum at the University of Delaware, which is a group of courses that introduces the students to a major of which they choose. But the disadvantage is that we as a faculty have not recently, I think, had a chance to sit down and ask what should our students have in the way of general education in the 1990s. Besides budget cuts and core changes, Dean Richards has set personal goals for the 1992 year. I am very concerned that we improve the quality of teacher education in our college. We are searching for a new associate dean for research in order to enhance uh, the support and leadership we're giving in our college to research and creative activity. And I'm trying also to make some major strides in the development area, both through the hiring of a new college development associate, a person who's just come on board, who will take leadership in that role, but also in such projects as developing a college newsletter to go out to our alumni and supporters. I am very pleased to be at the University of Delaware. Uh, this is a large job that takes uh, a lot of work, but it's, it's a very challenging growth opportunity for me and I'm hoping that I will give back as much or more to the University of Delaware as it's giving to me. For WTV, I'm Christine Fullerton. We all do it. In the shower, in the car, and often when we're alone. We all have that burning desire to be a superstar singer. is what's made it possible to put everyone in the limelight, and it's come to Newark's Klondike Cates. Some students tell why they like karaoke night. It just makes you feel like you're a superstar, you know? It's that moment in the spotlight, you know what I mean? I think it's really fun to watch a lot of people make fools of themselves. I think that's basically why it's so much fun. The manager of Klondike Cates brought karaoke to the restaurant over a year ago. It sounded to me like karaoke has got to be something that's fun, because first of all, people enjoy getting up and singing, but second of all, the rest of the people that aren't singing can certainly enjoy the fact that here's somebody that's going up there, whether they're good or bad. Karaoke gives people the chance to get up and sing without fearing they won't know the words. I don't know that anybody can take it very seriously. There's people that, of course, are professionals, but I think the atmosphere is not serious. You know, I think it's fun and exciting, and it allows them to let themselves go the majority of the people sing songs that their, their parents have, you know, played throughout the years and old standards, old traditional songs that when you hear them on the radio as you're driving in your car, the songs that are maybe 10 years old that you find yourself singing to, they're the songs that people come in here and have the backup without somebody else's words, you know, blending in with you and have, you know, give you the ability to sing it. What songs do you like to sing? Mostly Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi, Jay Giles, um, Jay Giles, Elton John, Little yeah, Motown. Elton John. I like to hear anything. <laughs> anything that sounds. I think the old best one. Heavy metal. Classic rock. Sometimes I like to sing country. Country music songs actually make it on. You know, the, the local FM radios, because they're so hot, they make your foot stomp, and that, you know, next thing you realize, oh, I do know all the words to these country western songs. Reporting from Klondike Cates, this is Jennifer Beck. What are you doing tonight, Friday night? I'm going to the balloon. <laughs> I'm going to the balloon. <laughs> going to the balloon. The stone balloon has been a traditional part of the history of the University of Delaware for the past 20 years. In celebration of the 20th anniversary of the stone balloon, WTV has decided to take a behind-the-scenes look at life at the watering hole we all know and love as the stone balloon. Here's the manager of the stone balloon, Phil Steinberg, to give us his insight on what the balloon is really about. We asked Phil, of the 800 to 900 people who frequent the balloon on an average night, how many are students? Approximately three-fourths. Phil commented on the new specials at the balloon. Well, we're always looking to add things, to add to the enjoyment that people have when they come here. Now we're starting happy hour all night on Tuesdays. We have beer specials on Fridays, which we never used to have. We're always looking for bands that'll draw people in. Finally, Phil told us why the balloon is unique and different than any other bar. 
I think our size allows us to do more things with what we have, as opposed to like the down under at a deer park where they're limited as the amount of people they can have come in. We can book national acts. Let's get the show on the road. Final Chapter is back with us this year to give us an update on their progress. Hi, we're Final Chapter. And from left to right, we have Ira Mayfield, Carl Johnson, Anthony Wilson, Alonzo Wilson, Antonio Wilson, David Evans, Mark Stewart, and I'm Kevin Spriggs. Last year, Final Chapter was on WTV. We've asked the group what they've been up to in the past year. Um, constantly working on original material. Uh, we'd like to thank the band as, as well as, you know, the whole impact. Coming up with heavy original material, trying to complete an album. Finally, Final Chapter describes the crowd at the Stone Balloon. Down to earth. The critical. Fun love. Crazy. Real people. Wow. Fam. Nice. Fun. Oh. <laughs> WTV has asked the staff and crew at the Stone Balloon to describe a night out at the balloon. This is what we got. Different. Definitely different. Diverse. Wow. Uneducated. Exhilarating. Insane. Definitely insane. This is Elena Finizio signing off from the balloon. Have a good night. The Student Services Building is a, it's a very real possibility, approved by the trustees, and, uh, and we have funded that project. It's actually a renovation of, an, of a, a building that has now been vacated uh, right adjacent to uh, Newark Hall. And we'll use that building as a location where we can do things that uh, serve the students, instead of having the students go around to a whole variety of offices to add points to their, uh, to their meal plan, to get their cars registered, to pay their bills, to register for their classes, and so forth. What we believe we can do is consolidate all of those services in one location and have the students do sort of a one-stop shopping kind of, uh, kind of arrangement. And we believe that will serve the students very, very well. The University of Delaware women's basketball team recently moved into the North Atlantic Conference. Delaware Avenue's David Gerhardt spoke with the team and its coach, Joyce Perry, on their hopes for the upcoming season. The Delaware women's basketball team enjoyed great success in the East Coast Conference. In the last three seasons, the Blue Hens compiled a 62-25 record and won three consecutive ECC titles. This season, however, the Blue Hens move into the North Atlantic Conference, a switch that leaves head coach Joyce Perry a little worried. A lot of the teams have a little bit more depth and they're just uh, size is greater, a little bit stronger. So it, we're looking for stronger competition plus the added travel and back-to-back -back games is going to be tough, something we're really not used to. The North Atlantic Conference is composed of former ECC opponent Drexel, as well as Maine, Boston University, Hartford, New Hampshire, Northeastern, and Vermont, a team that Perry expects to be a great challenge. Vermont was picked to win. Uh, they've been getting better and better, and they have a, a girl that's a sophomore, Sherry Turnbull, who was ECAC Player of the Year last year. She was a national player on the Canadian team, and she's exceptional. She's very good. Plus, they've got uh, a good backcourt. But Delaware has an ace of its own. Five foot, ten inch senior forward Jennifer Riley won ECC Player of the Year last season. As the Blue Hens co captain, Riley has her goal set for the new season. Basically, I'm just trying to set so we win the um, NAC, try to win the NAC, and um, hopefully try to get a bid into the NCAA tournament this year. In the backcourt, Delaware's other senior co-captain, Linda Saborski, returns after setting an NCAA record for free throw shooting accuracy by shooting 93.7% last season. Saborski said she looked forward to shooting for a fourth straight title. That's pretty exciting and I'm, you know, I'm enthusiastic about the season. As far as youth is concerned, Delaware gets a boost from Colleen McNamara, a six-foot center who has already captured several NAC Rookie of the Week honors this season. McNamara, like Riley and Saborski, expects the Blue Hens to do well in the new conference. We have the talent to do really well in this conference, so we have to boost up our confidence. But despite McNamara's presence, Coach Perry looks for one player to handle the ball at the end of a close game. I guess I'd have to say Jen Riley, she's been kind of our go-to player and she's led the team in uh, 
free throw shooting percentage too. And after this season is over, Delaware will be leaving the Delaware Fieldhouse for a new arena. The Bob Carpenter Sports Convocation Center, a $20 million facility seating 5,058 spectators, will be the Blue Hens' new home during the 1992-93 season. It's fun watching the building take shape. You know, we had seen the blueprints and, and have helped design the, the offices and, you know, ran on that from the ground floors. For WTV, I'm David Gerhardt. Uh, it was a uh, happening in my life. I think it gave me a lot of confidence as I look back at it. And and like Jim will say, he'll agree with me that it, it let me know that I can pitch in the big leagues. And it was, a, it was more or less of a jump start and a kick start in my uh, mental confidence and my physical confidence in myself. And that just about wraps up tonight's show. But make sure you stay tuned for tomorrow's program, which should be very interesting. Yes, tomorrow night's show will be a very special one because this year marks the 20th anniversary of WTV. Tomorrow we'll be presenting a special retrospective highlighting the past 20 years of winter term television history. So from Ward Schumann and the WTV staff, I'm Suzanne Marcus. Good night. WTV 1992 would like to thank its local business sponsors. Newark Camera Shop at 63 East Main Street, Triangle Liquors at 104 North Chapel Street, Herman's Quality Meat Shop at 64 East Cleveland Avenue. The Down Under at 60 North College Avenue, Daffy Deli at 111 Elkton Road, the Cat's Eye Unisex Hair Salon at 144 East Main Street, and Margarita's Pizza at 134 East Main Street.